Today, let us take some time to study the Word of God under the subject, the oil of faith. About 20,000 parts are needed to make a car. Then how many parts does an airplane need? But it is said that they need about 4.5 million parts to make a Boeing 747, which is a passenger plane. Then what about the human body? They say about 100 trillion cells are required to make the body of an adult. And how many parts are needed to make a cell? The other day we watched a video about that. It is said that about 10 billion parts are needed to make one cell. The human body is composed of 100 trillion cells and each cell has about 10 billion parts. Isn't this amazing? You were never just made by chance. You are truly precious beings. We can understand that no one who was born in this world is valueless. Even a thousand or ten thousand airplanes cannot catch up to the number of parts that a human has. God made our human bodies in such a mysterious way. In this mysterious human body, there is an amazing system that can embrace even the matters of the spiritual world, which the people of this world cannot comprehend. Let us put aside all other things for now and take a look at the part about faith. Faith is of the invisible world. Although faith pertains to the invisible world, it can change the visible world. Let's see what changes occur through faith. When we have faith, this world we are living in and our surroundings will begin to change little by little. They change into God's world little by little. Today, let us understand this matter. As for faith, we can see the case of the five wise virgins and the five foolish virgins in the parable of the ten virgins. In this picture, you can see the wise virgins buying oil. Oil represents faith. When God made the human body, He made each cell with about 10 billion parts and formed the whole human body with about 100 trillion cells. It is truly amazing. I was really surprised when I learned it through the video. Wow, our human body is composed like that. Also, even what did God plant inside of us, heavenly children? According to Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31, there is something God has planted. What is it? God said He would plant the new covenant in our hearts. The people who have the new covenant in their hearts are different. However, we, heavenly children, have something inside of us that can react when we hear the truth of the new covenant. That's why God told us to proclaim the gospel in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. If heavenly children hear this news, they show a response. However, people who are not heavenly children are in the same state even when they hear it, as if they haven't even heard it. I once explained to you how pigeons can find their way home accurately, even when it is pitch black at night. Modern science proves that it is because of magnetite, which God has put in the brains of pigeons. Today, we enjoy the glory of keeping worship with Heavenly Mother in this amazing, marvelous universe created by God. We are spending this day with our Holy Heavenly Mother in the flow of time which will never come back. Now, 
Let us take a look at the world of faith, which we need to feel and sense through the parable of the ten virgins today. In the parable of the ten virgins, five prepared the oil of faith sufficiently. They were wise. But the five foolish virgins prepared oil that could last only until the time the bridegroom promised to come. That's why they ran out of oil, while the bridegroom was a long time in coming. When we see this parable from the spiritual point of view, the five virgins who did not prepare oil are the believers who are lacking in faith. And the five wise virgins who prepared enough oil are those who have abundant faith. Without the oil of faith, we cannot light our lamps, nor can we push away darkness. Only when we have enough oil of faith can we shine the light of God's truth brightly as the heavenly people. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2, it is written that God tests us to know what is in our hearts, what our faith is like. God is only interested in our faith. It is not the external environment that changes the external world where we are living. We need to understand through the Bible that the external environment and the conditions change according to the faith that is inside of us. Let us confirm the reason why we must have strong, absolute faith in God. You see this huge city? Everybody please pay attention to how Joshua's faith changed the future of this huge city of Jericho. The Israelites selected 12 of the most trustworthy people with the best faith, one from each tribe. They sent them to explore the city of Jericho. After exploring the city, the leaders explained what they had explored and seen in Jericho to the Israelites and Moses. What did ten of them say? They said, the people who guard that city look like people, while we look like grasshoppers in our own eyes. This kind of report was delivered to the Israelites. The Israelites had already been about to run out of the oil of faith. As they heard the spies say that, they all ran out of the spiritual oil of faith quickly. However, Joshua and Caleb said, It is not true. God promised and is determined to give us the city. So the size of the city or the size of the people living there cannot be a problem. Even though they are giants or bigger than giants, we will swallow them up. We don't need to worry. God is with us. God is helping us. In this way, Joshua and Caleb moved forward with a strong determination. However, all the Israelites only thought about reality. They tried to stone Joshua and Caleb, who gave a positive report with faith. So what did God do to them in the desert? God excluded them from entering Canaan, just as they had said. God said, you are not qualified to enter Jericho. My servant Caleb has a mindset different from you. So is Joshua's mindset. Eventually, all the Israelites were destroyed in their 40-year life in the desert. And only Joshua and Caleb were given permission to receive a rich welcome into the land of Canaan flowing with milk and honey. Outwardly, the city looked like an impregnable fortress. That was reality. However, the world of faith has nothing to do with the world of reality. We must be confident that in the world of faith, all things are nothing before God. The people who absolutely believed that God would accomplish the work all became one in mind and followed God's guidance. They marched around the city of Jericho once a day, every day. And on the last day, 
they marched around it seven times. And when all people shouted, an amazing thing happened. Such giant people and the city, which was like an impregnable fortress, fell at once. Everybody, this is the world of faith. If you try to judge the world of faith with practical senses and practical thoughts, many problems arise. The ten spies of Israel explain what they saw just the way it was, from their actual point of view. However, Joshua and Caleb showed faith in God's promise that God would give them the land. Since they led the people of Israel with absolute faith, they were able to enter the land of Canaan safely. How they were able to enter the land of Canaan represents how we will enter the everlasting kingdom of heaven in this age, doesn't it? Everybody, what is necessary for us is faith. Faith functions as oil and as a guide leading us to the eternal kingdom of heaven. There is one thing we need to pay attention to about Joshua's faith. If they only look at the external circumstances, it seemed that they couldn't conquer the city. The city of Jericho looked like an impregnable fortress. Since giants, the descendants of Anak, lived in that fortress, they thought that they didn't even have a 1% probability to win. They thought their failure was definite, though they didn't even have a battle yet. They thought that they looked like grasshoppers, while the people in Jericho looked like people. So they thought it was impossible for a grasshopper to beat a man. However, the external environment changed by their faith. When they had absolute faith that God could certainly do this, the external environment changed. These amazing phenomena that they had never experienced before began to occur. Everybody, this is faith. This is the world of faith. If you talk about faith only in visible reality, such things can never happen. We can also take the example of Jonah. When God told Jonah to go to Nineveh and preach God's word there, Jonah was afraid and tried to run away to Tarshish. Tarshish was about 2,500 miles away from Joppa. Why? Didn't Jonah have faith? Yes, he did. Although he had faith, at that time, Nineveh was the capital city of Assyria, which always oppressed Israel. Assyria was an enemy of Israel. Also, they had a totally different religious view, worshipping pagan gods. As Jonah was told to preach in the center of the capital city of his people's enemy country, he was seized with fear that he would be stoned to death right away if he preached there. That's why he tried to run away to Tarshish. At that time, Jonah's oil of faith was at its lowest level. As he was trying to run away to Tarshish, God sent a storm to fill Jonah with the oil of faith. There was a storm, and their ship was about to sink. Then the people aboard said, This is not an ordinary climate phenomenon. In this ship, there must be someone who provoked his God to anger. They cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. He knew right away that it was God who did it. He said, I provoked God, whom I serve to anger, for this and that reason. So throw me into the sea, then the sea will become calm. Jonah was thrown into the sea by the people. God prepared a big fish to swallow Jonah. 
While being in the fish, Jonah carefully thought over many things. He thought about his cowardly behavior of trying to run away to Tarshish, disobeying God's word. He reflected on his poor faith in the belly of the fish. He might think, whether I die in the belly of this fish or die in Nineveh while preaching the word, it is going to be the same. Either way, I will die. At least then, I would die after doing God's will. He repented of his disobedience. As he repented, great faith was given to him. He was able to make a new resolution. So as you know, he went to Nineveh and preached vigorously to the people that the city of Nineveh would be overturned by God's anger in 40 days. He had thought that the Ninevites would pick up stones and stone him. But the totally opposite occurred. All the Ninevites began to repent. The news reached the king of Nineveh. When the king heard the news, he put on clothes of repentance and proclaimed that he, the king himself, and even little children of maidservants, and even animals in Nineveh, would fast and repent and ask for forgiveness for having oppressed Israel and for not having followed God's good will. Everybody, unbelievable things took place. What was impossible occurred in reality. If one prophet or one person has absolute faith in God, the situation changes like this. The situation of Jericho changed. And by the faith of Jonah, the people of Assyria repented, which was not likely to happen. When we have faith within us, the external environment changes. It changes to the world of God. It changes according to the Word of God. Even though we have hardships in reality, and even though there is a high mountain, we don't need to regard the mountain as high. If we follow the teachings of God, God changes even the high mountain into a flat land and changes deep valleys into a plain by raising them up. So the most important thing in our life is faith. If we only look at reality without having faith, our oil of faith will decrease. The ten spies were afraid, only looking at the magnitude of Jericho and the enormous size of the descendants of Anak in that city. God said that He didn't need the ten spies. God didn't give them the permission to enter the land of Canaan. We must think of God first. We can have faith when we think of God first. If we think about the external environment and conditions first, we cannot help but run out of oil of faith. When it comes to preaching to people, if you are afraid and think, when will we preach to all? Who's going to do it? Then you know that you belong to those who tremble with fear. About these people, God said, they are not fit for my work. God changes the external environment through people who have faith, even if there is only one person. This is the delicate operation of faith. The external environment never changes by external factors, but it changes by the faith within us. We need to keep this in mind. We must never fear the external environment that is seen with our eyes. The world of faith is never controlled by the external environment. 
The external world is controlled by the faith within us. We must understand this. Sometimes, we think that our inner faith will grow well if our external environment is good. But in fact, when our inner faith is strong, our external environment changes to be favorable to us. In other words, the things in heaven are the reality, and the things on the earth are the shadow. A shadow cannot come into being first, right? When the things of the spiritual world are formed first, the physical things can be made on this earth. When we think of this, we can understand that God's gospel can grow when our inner faith grows day by day. Please remember this. We can compare faith to a remote control. With a remote control, you can control the temperature of your house, though you are out. If it is hot, you can make it cool. Ten minutes before arriving home, you can control the temperature of your house. Although there is no one at home, the air inside the house can warm up. Switches turn on by themselves and the lights turn on automatically. By what? By a remote control. In the spiritual world, our faith plays the role of a remote control. Through our faith, we can change things in reality into what we want. That's why God tells us to have faith. Because we don't have confidence in this spiritual energy, we don't use it. We don't utilize the spiritual energy called faith. We must use faith to its fullest. It wasn't likely that the people of Assyria would obey God. But all those people, including the king, changed by the faith of one person, didn't they? Also, what happened to the city of Jericho by one person, Joshua? It was not with any physical means, such as throwing rocks, that they made Jericho fall. They used their faith. As they used the energy of faith, Jericho fell. God displayed before our eyes supernatural phenomena beyond our imagination, such as dividing the Red Sea, or raining down manna for 40 years in the desert. According to Revelation chapter 18, Babylon looks like an impregnable fortress, like the city of Jericho, doesn't it? However, what is going to happen in the end? Fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. Since God said that, we must have confidence that Babylon will definitely fall, even though it looks very strong right now. We all Zion family members throughout the world are in the process of fulfilling this prophecy. We must be confident that this will surely be fulfilled. What did Joshua shout to the people in Numbers chapter 14, verse 9? Do not be afraid of the people of the land, because we will swallow them up. Who promised to give us that land? Wasn't it God who promised it? We don't need to be afraid at all. Who divided the Red Sea? And who performed the amazing work of destroying the firstborn sons in Egypt? Who led us out of the land of Egypt? where we were slaves for over 400 years. Joshua gave a famous sermon with the message, They are our bread. It pleased God so much. In Numbers chapter 14, verse 24, it reads, But because my servant Caleb has a different spirit and follows me wholeheartedly, I will bring him into the land he went to. 
God approved his faith. Your faith is good enough to enter Canaan. We too should all be approved by God like that. From now on, when we pray to God Elohim, let us pray, please help me change my inner faith, not my external environment. Until now, we've prayed only looking at the environments around us. We want those who persecute us to be gone. But from now on, let us pray that our inner faith will grow more. Father and Mother, please fill my oil of faith abundantly. Then, our external environment will change. In the past, people used horses as a means of transportation. It is said that a horse knows whether its rider completely controls it or is afraid of it, even though he is riding on it. If a horse senses the rider's fear, it doesn't follow his lead. When the rider is in full control of the horse, and when they trust each other, the horse obeys its rider. Otherwise, the horse does not obey. If we participate in this great work of God without having faith within us, Satan notices it right away. Satan knows it, and more hindrances arise. However, if we have absolute faith, all the rough paths before us become the wide and smooth road. From now on, let's pray. God, please let me change my faith instead of my external environment. Then the mission to preach to all people will surely be accomplished. If an egg gets broken by an external force, its life ends. However, if it gets broken by an inner force, its life begins. In other words, the faith that is influenced by the external environment is dead. But if faith is built up by an inner force, it brings about a good beginning, a new beginning of life. A great work begins from the inside. Our work should begin from the faith within us. If anyone says, I can't do it because of this situation or of that problem, then he cannot do anything. But when a man has faith, what does God say about him? Everything is possible for him who believes. God makes everything possible so that we can do it, right? I can do what? I can do everything through him who gives me strength. We say that not because we are arrogant. God is enlightening us through the Bible as we do not know ourselves. That's why the Bible says, by faith Abraham, by faith Noah, by faith Moses. How could all the forefathers of faith do the amazing spiritual work? How could they carry out their spiritual roles? By faith, they did everything by faith. Brothers and sisters, let us no longer blame our external environment. We can't do that. That doesn't work. Because this is a city, because this is a business area, because there are many schools, we can't do that. Now, let us no longer make excuses. It had not been done because we haven't done it. When we did it, it was done. Jonah failed when he didn't want to preach in Nineveh. But when he did preach, everyone, including the king, repented, right? Everything is to be done in the gospel work. It is designed that way. This gospel can save the world. This gospel can bring happiness to all mankind. All nations are waiting for it. They are waiting for us, to listen to us. Still many people are waiting for our visit in each country. 
Still many people haven't heard this gospel in the world. Let us not miss anyone. There are our family members, relatives, and acquaintances around us. When we are determined to preach to everyone and meet Father, then every circumstance will change according to our faith. Then we must believe the words too. The gospel of the kingdom will be preached in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. This is our great blessing. We greet each other, God bless you, to wish each other to store up many blessings in heaven. Blessings on the earth are temporary. They will disappear when our life ends on this earth. Also, sometimes, things that were regarded as blessings turn to misfortune on this earth. But the blessings in heaven are everlasting. It will bring us good results, as well as joy and happiness. Let us put all our hearts into accomplishing the mission to preach to people. Also, let us all be united and make this year full of blessings. Father and Mother, thank you so much.